Hey guys, Sean Webster the band, live in Blues Moose Cafe, or Blues Moose Radio. Um, on a Wednesday evening, great. How was it for you on stage? It was great. It was a little bit different for me because uh, the audience were being were, were, were told to be quiet, but uh, because we were recording for the for the video. But yeah, no, it's, it's always good. We come to have a good time, and uh, we always we always seem to do that. So it's good. Well, we love to have you here, and um, for our listeners, can you give a, a small roundup how what the Sean Webster band is? How long he's busy on the road? I know you've been a a year out in Australia. Yeah. But now you're back on the road. Yeah, we, uh, we. I've known Phil. I've known all these guys for a long time. But Phil's been my Phil, Phil's been my drummer for like on and off for ten years. And I went to have some rest by in Australia. But when I uh, when it was uh, when it was not definitely on the cards that I was coming back, Phil's. Well, me and Phil, we stayed in touch all the time, right, man? Yeah, we spoke quite a lot. And uh, he, I got a ring phone call from Sean one day saying, "I'm moving back to Holland." I'm like, "Oh, okay, cool." And he's like. A bit like Blues Brothers. I want to put the band back together. Kind of vibe. Yes, yes. That's, I heard that phrase before. Yeah, yeah that's what yeah, I was, how yeah. it was going, man. And then we'd, we'd been a, a, in different carnations of the Sean Webster band. We'd been a three piece and a four piece at some stage. And uh, at that time, we'd been a, when I left, we were a three piece. And Phil said, well, if we're going to put the band back together, why don't we try uh, my brother, Ash, on guitar? As a, as a, and I was, it took me a while to get over that really, I'll be honest, to, uh, to encompass a, a fourth person again back in the band having developed my style to then play with just three, to let a fourth person come in and also to not be so precious took a, a while but Ash, you know, he's, that, he's, he's, he's like a lo lovable rogue really, he, he plays exactly what's needed to do with a smile on his face and he never causes any problems and he also He's been a frontman for his own band, so he knows what I, I require without even asking me, so it's great. Well, it's, one of, it's one of the, 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 the nice things on stage is that, it is, um, that there are two guitarists who are playing next to each other, not against each, uh, against each other, which is always better in a the band then. Yeah. Make a fight on it. Yeah, I mean, we have, we have, it's just about fun, isn't it? Yeah. Well, to be fair, Ash is five times the guitar player I'll ever be, so I'm just he like... He says it, it was just different. It was ten <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but he had a bad gig, I was playing okay. Yeah. <laughs> but no, we, so we, we don't really, we, there's no competition, and uh, I mean, Ash likes my playing, and, and uh, it's, it's all about perceptions, I think. A lot of people in, in the audience, or some people in the audience prefer my playing to Ash's, I, I don't know why that is, but um, it's just a different set of ears, and I love listening to Ash play, so it, it is no competition whatsoever, and it's always a, a joy to, to play with these guys for me. Uh, you've been on the road 2003, and now 2015 you released your third album, if I'm correct. No, it's actually the fifth. Fifth? Yeah. Oh, we run behind, but you can... Um, <laughs> well, well, to be honest, this is the third, I think this is the third studio album, yeah, so... You yeah, this is stage studio loosely. Yeah, well, the <laughs> well, no, the first one was in the studio. The second one was in uh, it was in a studio, yeah. and then the third one was in my ash, well, my old bedroom at home. It's in a studio. Well, it's not a it's studio. studio. It's not a studio. <laughs> it's a bedroom. Well, yeah, recording in a bedroom. So you know, some bands record in the basement. We record in the bedroom. Last time I called my bedroom a studio, that was with all different purposes. Okay. Well, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I don't know, yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, no, no. It was, uh, yeah, we'd get up at nine o'clock in the morning, and we were work till midnight for, for two weeks solid. In the sauna. Yeah, it's yeah, very, it very hot in there. It's very hot in there. But we were really pleased with the uh, the end product. You know, it sound, We were pleased with how it sounded, and um, we, we, you know, we. It was nice to not have some of the pressures that are, in, you know, synonymous with being in the studio. You know, like when you're up against the clock, we didn't really have that, which was great because it meant we could really. Um, you know, work on parts and how we, you know, trying to get tones, get, you know, great sounds. So, I think it, you know, it came across. Yeah, as it, well. was, it was good. Yeah, yeah, it was good. I'm always interested in, in the creative part of writing a song. Who's who's coming with the first few licks, or said this song is going to be on the CD? This is the lyrics that's going to be, or is it that? Yeah, and the thing is, I've always. I mean, I, I am starting to let go of a few aspects of, 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 the, of the music, as it were, but if the song, 99% of the stuff that we play in the set is personal to me, so I've been through it, lived through it, I'm going through it, or whatever it might be, and if I don't, if I don't, if I don't do that on stage, then I can't really feel like, um, 
I can't really put my heart and soul into it. So I write the lyrics, and uh, on this, on this, I, I generally write the music also. But on this album, me and Ash collaborated quite a bit. Um, so we put a few things. Ash came with a few ideas, which chop and change. And, and you know, I always write the lyrics because I. I, I don't really feel like sharing that with anyone. <laughs> no. if, I, if I'm honest, one of the things I can't understand if I'm trying to convey a certain feeling that's in my head, and I want to write it down on paper. I can't really expect Ash or any one of the other band members to know exactly how I feel to then be able to join with me to write it. Well, I, I can imagine if you if you recorded at, at his place, there was uh, certain produce uh, producing qualities. Well, available yeah, yeah. with your guys and saying if maybe if we approach it from a different style, yeah, the song is getting better. No, it? that's right. I mean, that's in, in, in that way. We we all, we all thought how it worked. That was how it all worked. the songs were. I'd written pretty much to part from two. No, but apart from one, we'd worked on or I'd written or me and Nash mm. had written. Apart from one that we that uh, that, uh, that we pretty much wrote in the studio, but they were already pre-written. And then when we got into the studio, me and Phil and all of us really started to work on work on uh, on the production side and we all produced each other and then we chop and change the songs about listen back see which are the best arrangements and then worked on it that way but the the basic setup for the song was was all written before we we, we got in the studio set up and now you're uh, you released your baby into the world and hopefully the people enjoy it is it is it is a anxious time for you you said no the, the work is done let me play it now yeah, no, yeah, yeah, interesting. Yeah, I'm, I'm my wife's pregnant, which is where the joke comes from. But um, no, the thing is, it's not. It, it is in a way because we, we all decided collectively that we were gonna we were gonna really go to town on this and with produ with um, promotion. And we've hired a promote a promoter and, and put our hands in our pockets to actually pay for a promoter in England that's pushing the album and getting it on the radio and getting sort of agents and gigs and this that and the other. So. It's, it's anxious in that way, but the, the money's already spent now, so we just we just have to wait for the people in black suits banging on the doors to uh, you know to collect the money back. So that's the anxious part. But apart from that, it's just uh, we we believe in the album, mm -hmm. right? And uh, it's the most excited I've been about an album since I started playing music. I know it sounds like a cliche because everyone says that the latest thing, but these guys are the best set of guys I've ever worked with. All well, cliches are there for a reason. Mostly they are true. Yeah, maybe so. <laughs> a lot of people use them as well. Um, and next to it, um, the CD is ready. The deadlines, where did, was that thing come from? <laughs> oh, that's, no. that's a good one, tell us. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were coming, we decided that the, the band wanted to have a, 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 or the rhythm section wanted to have their own identity as a rhythm section. In case they get hired by Clapton or something, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, so Harry Clapton and the Deadline. Me and Phil, <laughs> I live in Holland, and, and the rest get of back to that cream vibe. I'm sure <laughs> we'll get the call. Yeah. I live in Holland. The rest of the guys live in England. So it's not always easy. I know it sounds funny, but to have a telephone conversation either with our my schedule or their schedule or whatever we're doing, and me and Phil had a text message conversation for about. Two weeks. <laughs> it must have been two weeks. Two it was weeks, a long time, weeks. just Certainly constantly. Each of the, like, what about this name? What about this name? No, 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 no. And well, everything. We settle on a name, and I ring these guys. And no, this like is the it. name they go. <laughs> no, we don't like it. <laughs> and then we'd be back. back to the so in the very end, it was getting to like, well, look, this album's got to come out. We've not. The artwork's got to get done, and we've got to come up with a name. And um, these guys are predominantly because of Phil, always late. I'm always on time. And these guys are predominantly late because of... We were here first today. Yeah, we just, were. Just for the <laughs> uh, that's, uh, that's two tours in a row we've been here first. Oh, yeah. Really? Well, yeah. Anyway, but, but I'm still not late. You might be first, but I'm not late. <laughs> yes. oh. ah. So, um, we came up with... I said, oh, you're always missing deadlines. And Phil's like, let's just call ourselves the deadlines because we're always missing them as a flip-on oh, yeah, word. Yeah, because we were, we were like two months late for the release of the album. Oh, okay. yeah. That was it, yeah. and I was like, "Why don't we just call us the deadlines? Because we never make them." Yeah, as a bit of we never make as, as an in joke, not with Sean, just generally. <laughs> and then we you were like, "That's a terrible idea," and then you went, "Actually, the old one is finishing. That's a brilliant idea. Yeah. Let's just do that." Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. That was how it came, came, came around. Yeah. Are you banging that? Yeah. We'll we'll stop it. Oh. In the end, it was a very simple story. You could have been done it in, in, in thirty seconds. Yeah, we got no. Uh, <laughs> well, we got we got all the deadlines because we made our deadlines. <laughs> yeah, there is. A, yeah, we could we could say that. To be honest, I'm trying to remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I was trying to think of some of the other ones that are probably still on my phone that we that we that we threw away. Your voice. Back to the voice. Um, is there something you keep it that 
that edgy and that rough, or is it just if I sing, it, I sound like that? No, no. To be fair, I uh, I've had this voice, the exact same voice, since I was about 13, and uh, it gets worse the more beer I drink, or the later I stay up, and then so. <laughs> So, uh, and I'm just a bit, I'm, to, be, to be fair, I'm exhausted, so my voice is not completely on top form at the minute, but it stays the same regardless. It's just, it's just a matter of time of when it stops working you know, on an evening's entertainment as to how much beer I've drank or how little <laughs> sleep I've had or any other vice that I may, may or may not have been doing. So, but I've had it since 13 or 14, it's still the same. It doesn't, it doesn't I don't smoke, never have. It doesn't change with whiskey and, uh, yeah. Well, it's, it's a sound that suits the blues very well yeah it's yeah people i mean the, the, i think that the, the two things that not to not to be derogatory to the guys because it's a whole band set up but the two things that are being mentioned most about this album is my voice and ash's guitar playing so and my obviously dashing good looks so they're the three things that sell <laughs> sell this band luckily we're a radio station <laughs> We did a video tonight. Yeah, we did a video. Yeah, that's so right, a video. You're gonna, Check out Sean you're gonna Webster. benefit from that. Seanwebsterband.com. You'll just, uh, you know, be fine. <laughs> hey, and now the future. Let's let's look at it in the near future. First couple of five years. Sean Webster Band and the Deadlines. Bigger audience, bigger bigger holds. Yeah. New CD. Yeah. We're going to get towards the end of this year and start writing a new CD summertime again because that seems to be a happy sort of thing, and um, and then yeah, we just it's just about pushing, right, guys? Yeah, it's just, about it's just uh, I mean that's the, always the point I think when you're in a when you're in any project is try and get out to more people, try and play more regularly, and try and do it more. Try so and get bigger and better venues. Yeah, so that's that's really the aim, really. Hopefully, if more people like us, we need to be in bigger venues because there's more of a demand. So that's that's hopefully. It's all about ambition. Some people say, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm relaxed what I'm doing now. I keep my day job. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. No, we, we don't really want that, do we? No. no. Day job. Anymore. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no, no. I've had a day job for a few years now, so yeah. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm trying to avoid that at all costs. I think the thing is, is that you know, if, you, if you're trying to do this as well as you can, if you're distracted by a day job, then you, you, you're never going to be as good as you could be. You know, people always say it's a sellout if you try and do these, but actually, if you... If you, you have to give it a hundred percent, but obviously it's difficult. We're all, other than Phil, we're all you know in our thirties. We've got families. We've got so it, it can be difficult, you know, and, and um, to to make it work financially. Um, but we're all aiming to try and you know modify our lives in a way that means it's viable for us to do more of this and less of the normal get up. Go to work. But it is that old joke that they say, them, what is a musician without a girlfriend is home yeah, homeless. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Certainly true in my case. <laughs> in my case also. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of it. Well, the good thing is, you're, you got our support and we... Uh, oh, good. Yes. We're always interested in what you can do in the future, but now we're going to make a, a lovely uh, show out of it. And we thank you very much for uh, you. Uh, you very much. be our guest in our we Blue Smooth Radio we Show. We'd love to come back at some time and yeah, do this definitely. all again. Yeah, we'd love to do it again. Uh, can I just say one thing? The moose is loose. <laughs> the moose is, is loose. brilliant. <laughs> Hi, this is Sean Webster and the Deadlines Live on Blues Moose Radio The Moose is loose The Moose is loose And tune in, baby Tune in to listen for more songs Woo! Woo! Woo!